So you like my shirt? <laughs> Marilyn yeah. Manson? Yeah, you got to be careful with your wa- where, where you wear a shirt like that right now because he's right been now, canceled, I believe. Yeah, he's been canceled. Officially yeah. canceled. Yeah. And you're a big fan? Uh, I've always been a big fan of Marilyn Manson. Yes, yeah, since I was a little kid, the first thing I ever saw was when he did uh, like the MTV Music Awards or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think I was maybe 10 years old. Something, yeah. something something like that really young and I was super intrigued and followed his music ever since yeah well I mentioned he may have been a piece of shit person behind doors but uh my opinion on it my my uh my you know far away 20,000 foot opinion on it is that uh if you're getting into a relationship uh a romantic relationship with that guy you kind of have to have an idea <laughs> what to expect it's not yeah. gonna be normal <laughs> yeah yeah uh, well, unfortunately I think the visit was kind of I, I mentioned earlier that he invited me up to his house in uh I think it was last February. Did he really? The last, I can't even remember now. Um, it, was, it was well before the scandal. A- you know? After your book came out. He had the book and uh, he started reaching out to my agent to see if I would meet with him. And he was so cryptic in emails uh, that my agent didn't think it was really him. And he, he told his secretary to get rid of him. And she was a fan. So she said, oh, if I get on the phone with him, I'll know whether it's him or not. Yeah. And she got on the phone with him, and she said, it's him. And he just said, I would love to have him come to my house. I have something to show him that I don't think he knows about or that he's ever seen before, and it terrifies me to even possess it. So <clears throat> I, she said, he said, you could call him. So he and I got on the phone. He didn't think it was safe to tell me what he had on the what? phone. He, he wanted me to come see or hear it. He was being very vague and the fact is he didn't need anything i mean i love going into unusual situations and i thought and I, I i wasn't a huge fan you know i actually became a little bit of one when i did some homework but my collaborator is a musician he's an ex-drummer and he loved him and uh, he had just finished and published a book on prince where he was working with prince on his memoir and then prince died mm. it's actually how i got him as my collaborator because when prince died their project came to a screeching halt and then he had to wait a year or two to figure out whether or not that he had enough material to finish the book without prints. But um, I told Dan, my collaborator, I said, how would you like to go with me to Marilyn Manson's? I don't know if I want to go up there alone. And he goes, are you kidding me? So he got on a plane just to, just to go up there. So we went to the castle in the hills. And uh, he, uh, I don't know if he's ever going to listen to this. Uh, no, he won't. I've been trying to get him on this for years. Yeah. And he'll never do yeah. it. Uh, number one, I, I did love the guy, but he didn't have anything. What he had was an audio tape that he thought he had found in the house. Uh, he lived at the Tate house where the murders happened. He and Trent Reznor moved into they, the Oh, they recorded an album there, right? Yeah, well, they were living there and recording an album. Right. And while they were there, he found stuff that had been, like, left behind by the previous owner and tenants. And uh, one of them was an audio tape of Roman Polanski's police interrogation. And I had it already, you know. And, it's, oh. and you can get it. I had it actually 20 years before when nobody had it. But in the last five or six years, it somehow got out and there are bootlegs and you can buy it online. Right. So it was difficult because Marilyn was, you know, already partying. We we didn't even. He said, "Don't come before eleven o'clock at night." Uh, so we got up really? there at eleven, and it was actually a historic night if you're a fan because it was the first time he and his guitarist, who he threw out of the band a number of years before, Twiggy, Twiggy, were together and they they had reconciled recently, yeah, but they hadn't met yet. So he invited Twiggy over to. Um, hang out with me and Dan and him and talk about Manson. And Twiggy, I guess, had been through rehab and everything. Yeah. He, they were both really sweet guys, but Twiggy was sober. And Marilyn has this amazing screening room that feels more like a harem, unsurprisingly. There's no furniture. You just sit on pillows, and it's pitch black. And there's just huge, what would have been a huge, beautiful window with a, a view of the valley because it's high up in the hills, but it's all blacked up with bricks. <laughs> because I think all the windows in his house were like that. I'm not 100% sure. So um, we just 
spent like three hours talking about the book and he was trying to find the point on the tapes that he said, well, even if I had them, you probably don't have this. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I do, Marilyn. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to humor him. Uh, I didn't mind. We were still having fun. Right. And, uh, but it, it, thank God for Twiggy because Marilyn didn't know how to operate any of the technical stuff. So Twiggy was going through everything. And let's were just, they just little like cassette tapes or? Yeah, they were cassette okay. tapes. And uh, we finally, when we were done listening to them at about three or four in the morning, let's just say there was a lot of substances offered to us. And <laughs> Dan and I were on an adventure, so we accepted them. Twiggy <laughs> stayed away from everything. Right. And I think he left at about three in the morning. And then the even better stuff came out because he didn't want to have to tempt, want to tempt t- Twiggy. Twiggy, yeah. <laughs> and then at about seven in the morning, I said to Dan, I go, because Dan's 20 years younger than me. I said, Dan, if I do any more of this stuff, I'm going to have a massive heart attack or a stroke. I go, I can't die in Marilyn Manson's house. He's got enough problems, you know, with that Oh, that my happening. God. So we literally left, I think, at 7 or 7.30 in the morning. And um, it was fun. I mean, the one thing I can tell you about him, since you are a fan, yeah. is he's one of the smartest guys and funniest I mean, he could be a stand-up comic. The problem was he was so kind of, let's say, feeling good that he slurs a lot, and and he, and he also talks under his breath, and he doesn't. He's not show. He's not performative. He'll just say these off-the-wall remarks that almost make you piss in your pants. And I missed so much because he was slurring a lot, and I thought this guy could have a whole like ten other career. I know he acts now, but um, he, you know, he's a really intelligent guy. You know, he was having problems with his fiance then. It was um, the night before the Oscars, and they had had a huge fight because they disagreed on what he was going to wear to the Oscar party. They weren't going to the Oscars, but they were going to the big Vanity Fair party. And he helped Dan and I help him decide what to wear. Oh, really? Yeah, and he had already, uh, po- they had been supposed to get married th- two or three times already, and they kept fighting him and canceling it. She was somewhere in the house. We never met her. Who? Which one? Which which, which woman was it? Which she's fiance? The, she's his latest. She's a filmmaker. Uh, okay, I, can't I can't remember, remember her name. She's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, he and I, Dan and I, when we looked him up, her up the next day, she, she's a beautiful woman. I don't know if she's still with him or if she's made any of these allegations. Mm-hmm. But he went through all his old ex girlfriends with us and told us stories. And really, he should have made us sign an NDA, but he can trust us, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, he... Um, Did you drink any absinthe? Uh, he had it. Yeah. I, I not. He brought out tequila. Oh, And okay. when Dan looked at the tequila, I don't know my tequila, he said, this is like a 300 bottle, bottle, bottle of tequila. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're sitting on the floor because there's no furniture, and you get kind of uncomfortable. And after you drink a lot of tequila and do a lot of other stuff, <laughs> you're not as mobile, and at one point, he had brought out a second bottle of it, and I knocked it over right after we opened it, and he has a shag rug. And I'm like, oh, Marilyn, I'm so sorry I spilled a bottle. He goes, oh, man, I got cases of them in the basement. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah. What a story. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was an open book. We were talking about <clears throat> the rumors about, you know, the rib being cut out. And oh, yeah. Like what that. did he say about that? He said it wasn't true. He, he had a scar there for something. I can't remember half of what happened that night. Luckily, Dan took notes the next day, so I call up Dan to refresh. I should have done that. I didn't know you were a fan. That's one I of the most know. classic uh, rumors yeah. about him is removing the rib to yeah. suck his own dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he had a bunch of funny, one, witty answers when people would ask him that yeah. in, in articles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's, a fu- he's incredibly intelligent and mm-hmm. witty. Yeah. Like on the spot, being yeah. able to just just destroy people yeah and he had just finished his record which had a song or maybe it was a title had chaos in the in the uh in the title oh yeah we are chaos I yeah and, and, you know <laughs> and my book's called chaos and he's like don't you try to uh, uh sue me for plagiarism and i didn't steal it from you <laughs> it's a common word i got no, don't worry about it don't worry about it but when you're performing it you know hold the book up or something for mm-hmm. your millions of fans but i guess he's not going to tour now yeah, I don't know if he's doing anything. I don't think he's been in the public at all since yeah. since uh, Evan Rachel Wood came out and said all that stuff about him. And then a couple other piled on, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, one of his, one of his ex wives actually said that yeah, like he does do a lot of dark, demented shit, mm-hmm. but he never did anything that 
that that was Dita Von Tees, Dita Von Tees, yeah. right? She's mm-hmm. like, you know, he would never do anything as far as like rape somebody or like. I do think something. he should have stayed with her because she was the one he had the nicest things to say about when we were yeah. talking. Um, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was a trip. <laughs> and then the, he he texted us. I knew he wasn't going to bed, and he had mentioned at some point that he never gets up before five in the afternoon. And uh, he did text me at like five thirty or six saying he just wanted to make sure we got home okay and we were fine. I'm like, yeah. wow. I said, I couldn't do that a second night in a row, but whenever you do it, after I've had a few days rest and relaxation, just let me know, I'll come back. And then a couple months later, he he, just, he texted me Easter Sunday morning, so I know he hadn't gone to bed yet, at like seven in the morning and just said, happy Easter, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, and I have Marilyn Manson, you know, uh, into my phone. So I have Marilyn Manson, Happy Easter! Tom. Wow. So yeah. Oh man, man, it's 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 kind of just so bittersweet. Just this, his story, his life. Like, uh, you can't be that age and sustain that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, he played us some new music that hadn't been released. Uh, some he had a music video that hadn't been released. And uh, Dan got to talk to him about music, which made him, you know, so happy. Yeah. But I, I'm older school. I'm like, before Marilyn, my music was Patti Smith. Right, right. The Ramones and stuff like that. Yeah, well, his obsession was with, you know, those those days with, the mm. you know, the just the American obsession with and, and the combination of someone like Charles Manson and his story and be, being a serial Monroe. killer. He was just as equally, po- you know, mm-hmm. uh, such a part of American culture that Mar- as Marilyn Monroe was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that mixed with like the Kennedy, the Kennedy assassination mm-hmm. and the, all the obsession around that. Mm-hmm. And just it's just it's just fascinating how obsessed people are with true crime and these kind of mm-hmm. cultural iconic american stories mm-hmm.